See, this is, this is the secret to success. You surround yourself with really good people. <laughs> and we've got a lot of good people in this room right now. All right, I'm gonna, I've got about a dozen poems from the second half that I will read and that will close us out. <coughs> so we're up to summer now. Summer solstice. Am I the only one without the sense to stay inside? <laughs> I pound this path alone, but for the sun, its heat, and doubtful signs of shade. Too young, too thin, these trees that line the trail, not one that's even eight years old. Fingers of shade that offer no relief. Perhaps when I'm long gone, the blazing field of red and yellow flowers, full of life right now, will brown and wither, burn in time, like me. An act of balance, punishment, redemption. Only gods thought they could tame the sun. No shiny chariot, no hint there ever was. But cancers of the skin, I scan my flesh the evidence like sin. Mm -hmm. I have had melanoma, so uh, it's one of my concerns about being out there. But, you know, you have to, you have to balance, you know, cancer or exercise. And then, you know, as you keep getting fatter, it's like, well. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, eat less is not an option. <laughs> The egret and the snake. Mm. The yellow pentacles of water plants luxuriate among algae and scum, a brackish green, almost phosphorescent. The air is woolly, thick and dense. The thrum of flies like smoke takes shape. Uneasiness belies the flower's calm, the tedium of too much heat. And is there one of us who wants to see a snake wrestling for life? The egret's beak clamped tight, the effortless ascent of white and serpents crash. The rough return to earth, to Eden, dust to dust and cell by cell. The viscous air is rife with death. The yellow pentacles are lost. They drift unmoored and then they fade to rust. Mm -hmm. No coincidences, no accidents. Some claim it's all connected. Squirrels limp as dolly clocks, the smoke from Mexico, thin strands of sunflowers that tease and bump like children. In the yard, the grackles go about their business. In the park, the geese, like portly ballerinas, stretch and bend for bread. A kite unravels. Melting ice from someone's cooler dissipates. The pond is ringed with scum. Maybe Saharan dust has caused my sneeze, which makes a glacier tip in Canada, which floods the lowest caste in India, a Rube Goldberg setup. So global warming might just be the fault of these picnickers. One strong shake of salt. <laughs> Summertime. The willow yellows with each passing day. Only July, too early for these leaves to change their hues, yet cypress needles splay beneath canopies gone to rust, and sheaves of bark from sycamores curl at the trail. The purple horse mint now is gray, and green has faded from the field, wheat-colored, frail, 
the drought is real, but not unforeseen in Texas. Miles of sky and not a speck of cloud, just waves of heat rising like vines once did before withering. Mud and dreck, the lakes down to nothing. Mosquitoes whine, even the waterfowl seek shade. This park too sear for the start of a long dry arc. Second skin. I know which water fountains work, and though I seldom stop, where each park bench is moored, where each four steps the shade fans out below young oaks, and where the turtles tend to hoard. I know the areas where water pools, where gravel's loose as walking on a beach, where the quisache seem demure, and fools soon learn how well their prickly thorns can reach. I know the spot where scissor tails cavort, where lizards are most likely to be seen, where geese lay eggs, where great blue herons sort their catch, where wood ducks float in endless sheen. I do not know myself this well, this park of fine diversion, blind this heart of bark. Mm -hmm. I had to have at least one poem in here about sounds. Um, partly because I'm walking out there all the time now, and half the people you walk by and you say hi to or something, they don't hear you because they've got something over yes. their ears or in their ears or something. So this one's called What I Hear and They Don't. The traffic sounds are there, no argument, but fade into white noise. I hear the dash of waterfalls, a mockingbird's cool rant, the chatter of oak leaves, the gibberish of squirrels, all the things one cannot hear with headphones, earbuds, Bluetooth. How they miss the buzz near Jasmine, the cicadas roar, the plop of frogs in ponds, the bold address of geese. Some days I almost hear the wings of dragonflies mm -hmm. in flight, the keen heartbeat of sunflowers, the gentle undersongs of grasses. Other days I hear the pat of running feet as someone dashes near to me, but when I look, no one is there. <laughs> Pandemic. The trees are starving, though they're not alone. The hungry mouths of grasses gasp. The pleas of shrubs are raw, their brittle throats like bones, and even lakes are thirsting. Dry disease has lashed the land in suffocated breath. The willow's locks have shrunk to strands, the burn of radiation clear, the pall of death at hand. In Michigan, the maples turned, according to a friend, in August. Here, the leaves are brown as river bottoms, brown and parched like beds of creeks abandoned Seer. The drought and heat have scarred our Texas towns, while further north the ravaged glacial ices deplete. Yet still, some claim there is no crisis. Mm -hmm. And you know, for someone who, whose uh, these poems are all based so closely on observation. This is a poem about sometimes you miss the big picture or the big things. It's called The Water Tower. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it didn't surface overnight. 
this gauche metallic Trojan horse that looms beyond the park, this seely menace to my cache of memory. I'd noticed undersides of sycamores as silver as the lake's serene facade, a lonesome centipede along a Spanish dagger's blade. For weeks, I'd watched the muley grass maroon and glow, the broken arms of spindly elms and oaks. My husband claims I've cataloged each bough, each weed along the trail. So how'd I miss this hulking edifice? <laughs> I passed it by, absorbed in smaller things, without a glance. The bigger picture never had a chance. <laughs> more here. Uh, my my uh, brother-in-law uh, died of cancer a few years ago and this was this is written for him. His name is Bob Lindemann. The poem's called Morning Glories. The native morning glories twined their way through thatch and grass along the traveled trail. Up posts and young burr oaks up Quisache, round thorns like razored needles. They prevail, insistent as gaios, their bugles blue as dawn, their notes both high and clear. They've half a day to make the most and bloom into themselves before they write their epitaph. We've much to learn from them, the stretch the climb, the brief blast of a horn, the feeble hold to any higher thing. There's never time, there's never time, how quick from young to old. With each daybreak, a blue spreads out its rhyme. Remember, morning glories open folds. Mm -hmm. Coming to the end of the year here, November. It's called No Rain. November straggles in, and still no rain. At least a break from unabated heat with somewhat cooler nights. But days remain engulfed in warmth, this fall too indiscreet, a burnt sienna season. Grass is brown, and leaves are listless, even the mesquite. The lake's so low the fountain's been shut down. A line of scum has grown as deep and thick as mire. The grackles seem to have left town, their congregations scarce. How politic this summer, girding well beyond its rain while we're worn out. Is fall just rhetoric? We pray, we yearn for a late hurricane. December dawdles near, and still no rain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's those, uh, those days where we want rain, even if it means a hurricane on the coast, because it will bring us some rain. <laughs> and, and I'm gonna close with this last poem of the book, which is one of my favorites of the book. It's called Formations. A quiet field of punctuation marks becomes a murmuration. Mm -hmm. First, the lift, despite a brutal wind, and then the shift across the sky from right to left in arcs that sail in folds, a hundred wings as one, apostrophes in sync, an aerial display of feathers, beaks, and last, a pole back down to earth, this sudden dance undone. Our lungs inflate, our breathing bellows cells and movement, rising, falling, that's a fact. My own heart murmurs, beats its wings the same direction, over, over, casts its spells, abandons them, 
and so expand, contract. It's how the world began, how we became. I want my partners in front to be up here with you. Because uh, I know they can want some pictures of everybody here. Dude. I learned another lesson. Next time, invite people who are much fatter than me. <laughs> and not as, you know, really kind of ugly. <laughs> Makes you look better. <laughs> You're not about me to anything in the <laughs> So I want everyone to give Joe another hand. Paul for these wonderful photographs. Okay. Thank you, Scott. I appreciate it. Buy many books from Melbourne. <laughs> uh, you know they they they've got a ton of food here too. Eat, eat, eat. <laughs> and Scott and uh, I, I guess maybe Paul too will be behind the table over Absolutely. there, so you know, are available to, to talk to you about photographs or sign books. Sure. So that'll be great. And please do enjoy some food before you leave.